Imagine a world where a man having a heart attack is told it's all in his head. A world where a man has to wait four years longer to be diagnosed with common health diseases. Where treatments aren't made for his body, not because of science, but because it was easier not to. Sounds crazy, right? But that's exactly what we've accepted as the norm for women today. I always knew that we were behind in women's health. Like many of you, I'd read the stats, I'd heard the horror stories from my friends, but it wasn't until I started digging in deeper that I realized just how behind we are. As a health tech investor, I spoke to over 100 AI startups so excited to transform healthcare, but only four were focused on women's health. And we need so many more to close the gap. Heart attacks? Women are seven times more likely to be sent home during the heart attack. Endometriosis, an excruciating condition where tissue grows outside of the uterus, can take eight years to diagnose, partially because doctors aren't trained to recognize it. Autoimmune diseases, women make up 80% of patients, but treatments are made for men. We keep assuming that what works for men would work for women, but this ignores the 60% of health issues that actually impact women differently. But our medical models ignore this. Meanwhile, we've poured in billions of dollars into research for men's health because apparently we care more about whether a man can perform in bed than the menstrual pain women experience every month. This is about human lives. It could be the life of your mother, your sister, your girlfriend, your daughter, it could be your life, and this could be me. Now, sometimes when we have new technology, we can also have new solutions. And recent advances in AI give us a fresh and exciting lens to be able to tackle this age-old problem. There has been no better and pressing time to start innovating in women's health. And today, I'm going to speak about two key areas where AI can make an impact for women's health diagnostics and treatment. Let's start with diagnostics. Women have been misdiagnosed and diagnosed too late. Imagine the story of Serena Williams, tennis champion. She had just given birth, a moment that's supposed to be filled with joy, but she started to feel like something was very wrong. She knew her history with blood clots, and she asked the doctors to run some tests, but they dismissed her saying that the postnatal medication was making her talk crazy. It wasn't until she repeatedly fought for herself that they ran the tests and found a life-threatening blood clot. Now, if that's what a woman as powerful and famous as Serena Williams has to face, imagine what everyday women go through. Because women aren't just waiting longer, they're waiting in pain. A woman with severe stomach pain who goes to the ER will wait 33% longer than a man with the same symptoms. Women have to wait four years longer to be diagnosed with the same health diseases. And no treatment, can, no technology can fix all of this. But what if we had a way of something that could act as a safety net, something that could act as eyes and ears for doctors to be able to make them make the right diagnosis? And AI has the power to do just that. Imagine if Serena's concerns didn't need to be dismissed based on race and gender, and instead we could have voice-to-text models that transcribes what she says, notes it down, and flags it for her care team, increasing accountability and action. And even in settings where symptoms are taken seriously, AI models can help doctors detect problems earlier. In maternal health, where death rates have actually doubled in the last decade, models can help predict pregnancy complications earlier. And even with breast cancer, we can have computer vision models that can detect the tiniest of lesions, helping to save lives. And even behind the scenes, large language models can run scanning medical literature and patient data so that we can find the right diagnosis for every patient. Because AI isn't about replacing doctors. It's about giving doctors that second pair of eyes and ears to give every woman the right diagnosis. Diagnosis is just step one. 
Step two is making sure we can build out the right treatment plan. Take Monica, a 52-year-old woman living with rheumatoid arthritis, a condition in which her immune system attacks her own joints. Sometimes even lifting up a toothbrush can be difficult for her. She goes to the doctors who give her a medication, doesn't work. Another treatment leads to stomach pain. A third leads to crippling body fatigue because these treatments aren't designed for Monica. Women make up three times as many autoimmune patients as men, yet most of the treatments are based in studies that focus entirely in men or forget sex-based differences. Women have been neglected from clinical research for far too long. It wasn't even until 1993 that clinical trials were required to have women. And if you're not in the trials, you're not in the treatments. It's one of the reasons why women report 52% more adverse side effects from common medicines than men. Now, AI and precision medicine can start to bridge this gap and help us find the right treatment for every woman. First, we can use AI to uncover overlooked treatments. We can have large language models to scan through millions of data sets to find drugs that already exist, but were never considered for women's health. And AI models can reprocess past clinical trials data to understand certain treatments that actually impact women differently. And once we've actually understood what the right treatments are, we can start to help every woman figure out what the right one is for her. Models can go through and take into account every woman's complex hormones, her genetics, her symptoms, her medical history, so that instead of prescribing medications based on population averages, we can choose the right medication before she even takes the first dose. With AI, we can move beyond this one-size-fits-all model and help every woman find the right treatment for her body and her life. Diagnostics and treatment are just two of the many areas where AI can help women's health. We need to make sure as we do this, we're considering issues with accuracy, with privacy, with transparency, so we don't reinforce the very biases we're trying to remove. But we're already starting to see the successes with AI today. In fertility, AI is increasing the success of IVF trials by helping doctors to be able to detect viable embryos. In mental health, AI-powered chatbots are able to provide the first line of support to busy mothers, increasing access to healthcare. And wearables are able to take in millions of data points to be able to give women the access to make decisions about their every day. We can't treat women's health as though it's a niche in modern medicine. Women's health impacts more than 160 million lives and represents a $1 trillion market. So let's build. Let's use these advances in AI to start to build a future that every woman deserves. This could be for your mother, your sister, your friends. This could be for you, and this could be for me. Thank you.